Good afternoon and welcome to our quiet Christmas service. This service is for anyone and all of us who have something that we are missing or grieving or who are just looking for a place to find peace and hope. If you are participating in this worship service from home, I invite you to pause worship if you haven't done this already and try and find a candle that you can light later in the service and find somewhere in your house an empty chair. And we'll explain that later in the service too, but you're gonna want to be near your empty chair and have a candle if you wanna physically participate with us. If you just wanna sit and relax and be, we welcome you to do that too. Let's begin with our call to worship. Today we come looking for the Christ child. We come bringing our hurts, our worries, our fears. We come seeking relief from pain. With the psalmist of old we say, O oh Lord, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Give heed my cry, for I am brought very low. And we proclaim with John, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I invite you to join me in the confession and forgiveness. Dear Lord, we come to you this day to express our failures and confusion regarding our relationship with you. You know that we come to you with heavy hearts that we find hard to unburden. It is particularly in this time of year when the long dark nights collide with the brilliance of Christmas lights, that we find it hard to express our losses. We may be confused, sad, lonely, and feeling lost without remembering that you are always there to support us. We tend to feel anger at you, Lord, because we feel in some way that it is your will that we are unhappy. Sometimes we feel cut off from you, because we allow our many hurts to engulf us. We lack trust in you. Open us to the understanding that you are the source of all love, and we need not feel so alone in our grief. Grant us wisdom to know that you, most of all, can be trusted and that you are with us, especially when we are at our absolute worst. 
Let us open our lives to God's healing presence and receive our Lord's acceptance of us. We know, God of love, that you are always with us even in our very darkest of times. We know that you forgive our many transgressions and that by leaning into your infinite patience and strength, we receive your mercy, your care, and your grace today. Amen. A reading from chapter 9 of Isaiah, verses 1 through 6. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoiced when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. invite you to join me in reading the psalm responsibly. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? Our help comes from God, who made heaven and earth. God will not suffer your foot to be moved. The one who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, the one who keeps Israel shall not slumber or sleep. The Holy One is your keeper. The Holy One is the shade at your, on your right hand. The sun shall not hurt us by day, nor the moon by night. Our God shall preserve you from all evil and shall preserve your soul. Our God shall preserve our going out and our coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The second reading is found in Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who will indeed intercede for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The first candle we are lighting this afternoon, we light to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, their face, their voice, the memory that binds them to us in this season.
May God's eternal love surround them. The second candle we light is to redeem the pain of loss. The loss of relationships, the loss of jobs, the loss of health. We pause to gather up the pain of the past and offer it to God, asking that from God's hands we receive the gift of peace. Refresh, restore, renew us, O God, and lead us into your future. The third candle we light is to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember these past weeks and months the disbelief, the anger, the downtimes. The poignancy of reminiscing, the hugs and handshakes of family and friends, all those who have stood with us, we give thanks for the support we have known. Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness. The fourth candle we light to remember our faith and the gift of hope which the Christmas story offers us. We remember that God who shares our life promises us a place and time of no more pain or suffering. Let us remember the one who shows the way, who brings the truth, and who bears the light. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Dear friends, what a year it has been. We can say that most years, because each year of our lives is filled with good and hard, happiness and sorrow. But this year, this COVID year, I think most of us feel this year has been a difficult year. We have ridden the waves together of feeling safe and feeling terrified, of hopefully feeling joy, and of definitely feeling grief. We have many in our Bethlehem family who have lost loved ones. We have many in our family who are apart this year because of physical distancing. And for those of us who are grieving this year, in some ways, the grief is compounded as we weren't really able to say goodbye or as we had to wait for funerals and celebrations of life when it feels safer. And it feels hard this year. When on the heavy days, it's almost impossible to be able to sit down with a friend and just be together in the joy and the pain. We have many of us that, who sit this year at Christmas with empty chairs at their table. Maybe they're empty because they normally would have been filled with relatives who have died this year. Maybe they're empty because of loved ones choosing to stay apart this year to keep everyone safe. Maybe those chairs are empty for another reason. Other things are happening and you just can't or don't feel like celebrating this year. Maybe for you this Christmas season, something feels like it's missing. Things feel different. It just doesn't feel whole. I invited you before worship to have an empty chair beside you. If you did that, I invite you to focus on that empty chair. And if you didn't, I invite you to focus on ours. Who is it that you wish could sit in your empty chair this year? Maybe you need more than one chair because you've lost more than one loved one this year. Maybe you don't even know who you would put in the empty chair. You just know that this year has left you aching for something different. I invite you to take a moment and think about who you would like sitting in that empty chair. Now I invite you to look at that empty chair again and picture Jesus sitting there. Not in a scary way, but in a way that we are reminded in Scripture that Jesus promises to be with us always. Picture him there, sitting beside you, and then know that you can just talk to him. You can pour out whatever you are feeling because Jesus can take it. Because Jesus has been there too. He lost loved ones too. He was disappointed in the world around him too. He felt abandoned by his loved ones and by God too. Picture him there listening as your loved ones used to. And then picture him in heaven with the loved ones you are missing today, listening to them, hearing the stories they share about you, loving you and loving them, and looking forward to the day when you can be re reunited with them once more. 
The chairs in your house may be physically empty this year, but no matter what you are facing, you can know that Jesus walks with you and hears your cries and clothes you with hope. I'd like to share with you a poem by one of my favorite authors, whose name is Joyce Rupp. This poem is titled, A Time of Difficult Transition. It says this, Divine Companion, there's an ache in my heart that stretches like a canyon, crying out for all the familiar faces and places of yesterday. All the tears of my loneliness gather themselves together quietly. A hollow sadness rises in my soul and presses at my every moment. I am a lost one in a foreign land, an orphaned one without a home. I am out of place and unsettled, yearning for peace that hides from me. My feet take me through each day, but the rest of me just drags along, wondering if I will ever feel at home, doubting if this path is right for me. Ever-abiding life giver, be a source of hope for me this day as I adjust to this great change. Be a sparkle of joy in my spirit as I struggle with the pain of farewell. Be a strong connector of love for me as I leave many treasured ones behind. Consoling one of my heart, assure me with glimmers of peace that this transition can be a source of growth. Grant me hopeful eyes that see beyond today to the time when joy will tumble freely. Lift up my heart and comfort me. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Each one of us comes bearing our own hurts, sorrows, and broken places. I want to invite each of you to offer your own personal wounds to God, who loves each of us so deeply, who wants to take away our pain. God waits patiently, gently, calling out, give me your pain, come to me, all who labor and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest.
as we light our Christ candle here in this place. We invite you to light your candles at this time as well. As you do, remember that it is God who lights a candle in our darkness and holds us close until we're able to shine. If you wish, you may pause our worship service and take some time to pray to God about the wounds that you bring this Christmas season. All of these candles and these lights in their brightness are only symbols. But as they burn and finally go out, we remember that suffering passes and memories remain forever. Let us pray for the whole people of God and all of creation. Gracious God, we thank you for those we love and who loved us. We are grateful that they were a part of our lives. We pray that nothing good in their lives will be lost, will be, but will be of benefit to the world, that all that was important to them will be honored by those who follow. We thank you, Lord, for the friendship they gave and for the strength and peace they brought. We thank you for the love they offered and received in this life. Healing God, we thank you that in Christ we are forgiven for those times when we failed those we love, through our words or our actions. We ask for healing of those deep wounds, for the times when our trust was betrayed or when we felt abandoned or when we are angry. Ever present, Lord, we ask you that through our family and friends, through our hearts and minds, in our courage and our consciousness, that which needs to be set aside, forgiven and forgotten can be released and redeemed by your grace. God of hope, we pray for ourselves who are tested by sorrow and the changes that have happened in our lives that we do not try to minimize our loss or seek refuge from it in words alone, nor brood over it so that it overwhelms us and isolates us from each other. God, grant us courage and confidence in the new life that you have promised. We ask these prayers in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Lord, gather us in your grace and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing, the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lived and suffered and died for the sake of all suffering and hurting humans yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, and the presence of God's Holy Spirit supporting and encouraging you be with you through this season of the longest night. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen.